New Star, I think of as a fairly new player uh, to the advanced TV space. Tell me a little bit about your uh, New Star's background and what their core capabilities are. Yeah, so we've been around 20 years. We originally spun out, spun out of Lockheed Martin. Uh, at that time, you might remember that people couldn't port their phone number from one carrier to another. Right. You know, it's hard to imagine. Most people don't remember, but there needed to be one company to create a registry for those phone numbers and a clearinghouse for all the different networks to connect into, and that was Lockheed Martin. So fast forward to today, 20 years later, what we've been spending our time on the last 20 years is all the rest of the identity that could be used in marketing, repurposing these same kinds of competencies. So in the last few years, we've extended from offline marketing, so mail to mailboxes, automating call centers, cleaning up databases for some of the, the biggest brands in the country, you know, cleanse and appending those databases with more data. We've extended that competency into digital where we're taking all of our own data assets and attributes, there's over 15,000, linking them digitally with cookie pools. So we've created up this massive amount of online coverage. Uh, and there's only a couple of places that you can go to do that in the United States outside of, say, Google. So we're one of those companies that can match cross-platform. And in the marketing space, there's really three things that kind of stand out, especially in a conversation around advanced TV or addressable TV. The first is identity. So we are one of the companies using our one ID system that has every consumer touch point that you need in order to follow the customer journey and, and, and marketing. The second thing is a data management platform through the acquisition of aggregate knowledge that's used by advertisers and agencies as the platform to pull in all of their media exposure normalize it in a way that it can be linked with all these attributes about the people who are exposed. It's used to, for frequency management in the digital space and others, but, um, but that in itself is the type of infrastructure that's used to bring in any kind of touch point, including television. But the, the biggest breakthrough for us in this last year has been the acquisition of market share. So market share's value proposition is kind of twofold to major national advertisers and multinationals. There's, there's two components. The first is multi-touch attribution. This is the ground up kind of attribution linking at a granular level uh, an ad spend with an exposure, doing it across everything that you do, including something as simple as direct mail that we talked about earlier. Um, all the way to what, what's now television. But that's, that's, the, that's kind of part one of what we do with these large advertisers. Part two, the strategy component, is helping the CMO look at their entire spend for the year, um, test it against historical data, pull in all these other at attributes of, uh, around what's happening in the country. So it could be pricing, competitor spend, where the economy's headed, and figure out how to allocate spend in the next year based upon this historical performance over the last year. And that continues to get better. You know, Our, our recent uh, announcement with Facebook to pull that kind of that kind of advertising into the platform as well is making a big difference. Those those are the three things: identity, platform, analytics. So you've made a lot of progress in 2016 by adding kind of TV to the mix, right? Yeah. So tell me about 2017. What's on the horizon to um, further your work in advanced TV? Yeah. So in, in television, we we've done plenty of analytics through the market share side. Our, what we're currently doing in television to enable audience data, it could be the advertiser's data, it could be offline data or their online data, uh, visitors to a website, linking that to like subscriber files uh, from all the MVPDs and delivering that audience data to them in concert with the agency uh, or whatever is the arrangement. And then getting back all the ad log files from them to do the so-called closed loop measurement. Did the advertising actually cause a lift in sales? I mean, that's the basics. Let me get, everybody's looking at doing that, but I, I mean, the fact that Newstar is doing it now, I think is a great sign for the industry. Uh, some of the other companies you've talked to today have been in the space for, what, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, providing demographics, uh, you know, providing safe haven services, things that we can do as well, and we, we've started to do today. Um, but next year, uh, it's more of that. I, I think now's the time to push demand. Like it, it is, you know, a lot of people who've focused on digital advertising hear the word programmatic and we talk about it in television. We use it too much. It's a little confusing. People think like, well, I'll start doing addressable TV when I know it's fully automated. Like it, it's not going to yeah. be fully automated anytime soon. 
but the people know what they're doing. The point is scale. So through this year, maybe a third of U.S. households are addressable. Next year, we could be to 60% of U.S. households, given some new uh, TV providers that are coming available, some other you know, uh, smart TV sources. So uh, now's the time to do tests. If, you have, if, if an advertiser has not applied their CRM data or tried out addressable T to figure out where it fits into their overall mix, um, they should do a test with at least one of these TV providers with some reasonable spin. But if they've been doing it for a while, it's time to double down where you've seen it work you know, uh, with greater scale next year.